I'm... Oh! <laughs> Is it you? Without vanity, I have taken the liberty to enter this apartment. The moment the good news reached my ears. Adios. Pardon an old servant, your father's old butler, gracious lady, who has had the honor to carry the baron in his arms. If he thinks it his duty to make his congratulations with due reverence on this happy day, and to join with the muses in harmonious tunes upon the lyre. Mr. Butler, I am not in a humor to hear your muses and your lyre. There has never been a birthday, nor a wedding day, nor a christening day celebrated in your family, in which I have not joined with the muses in full chorus. In 46 years, 397 congratulations on different occasions have dropped from my pen. Today, the 398th is coming forth, for heaven has protected our noble master, who has been in great danger. Oh, thank heavens! Danger! My father in danger! It is my duty to inform the whole castle of a base and knavish trick of which the world will talk, and my poetry hand down to posterity. What happened? Speak for heaven's sake! My verse shall tell you. No, no! Tell us in prose! Yes, in prose! <laughs> ah, you have neither of you ever been in love, or you would prefer poetry to prose. But, excuse the haste <laughs> in which it was written. I heard the news in the field always have a big pencil about me, and composed the whole forty lines on my way home. O oh, muse, ascend the forked mount, and lofty strains prepare about a baron and a count who went to hunt the hare. The hare she ran with utmost speed and sad and anxious looks of the furious hounds, indeed, <laughs> were near to her. <gasps> At length, the count and baron bold their footsteps homeward bended. For why? Because, as you were told, the hunting it was ended. Before them straight, a youth appears who made a piteous pother and told a tale with many tears about his dying mother. The youth was in severe distress, and looked as he had spent all. He seemed a soldier by his dress, for that was regimental. The baron's heart was full of ruth, and from his eye fell Brino, and soon he gave the mournful youth a little ready rhino. He gave a shilling as I live, which sure was mighty well, but to some people if you give an inch, they'll take an L. The youth then drew his martial knife, and seized the baron's collar, and swore he'd have the baron's life, or else another dollar. Then did the baron, in a fume, soon raise a mighty din, whereon came butler, huntsman, groom, and ache the quivering. Marvelous young man's warlike coat, they bore him off to prison, and held so strongly by the throat, they almost stopped his whizzing. Soon <laughs> may a neckcloth called a rope of robbing cure this elf, if so, I will write without troop his dying speech myself. And had the baron chanced to die, oh, grief to all the nation, I must have made an elegy and not this fine narration. <laughs> Moral. <laughs> Henceforth, let those who all have spent and would by begging live take warning here and be content with what folks choose to give. <laughs> Find no fault in your poetry, 
But don't impose it upon us as truth. Poets are allowed to speak falsehoods, and we forgive yours. I won't be forgiven, for I speak truth. And in due time, the robber shall pass through here in custody to prove my words. If so, I will write without proof his dying speech myself. 